Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, good morning, Bay Area Chinese Bible Church. My name is Toby Yu, and I am the youth pastor here at this wonderful establishment. Uh, I know, I'm just kind of sucking up to my own church. Um, I want to thank you guys for joining us, whether you are watching online, whether you are here in person. We want to thank you guys for being here this morning. Uh, before we get into our uh, exciting program today, and today is a very, very, very special Sunday, and you guys will see why in just a few moments. I do have a few announcements I want to give you guys uh, before we get into our worship set, all right? And so my first announcement uh, is, I believe, it is baptismal service. Oh, mass update, first of all. Uh, starting next week, um, we are going to make it optional, still strongly recommended, but we will make it optional for those of you guys in the audience. If you guys want to keep your masks on, fine, fantastic. If you want to remove it, fine, fantastic. All right, um, so we're going to be loosening up a little bit. So this is going to, I believe, right, Dates right? Yeah, this is going to be our last Sunday where we're, we're going to require everyone to keep their masks on. And then next Sunday, we're going to strongly recommend but not mandate, not require everyone to keep their mask on while indoors here. All right, now, we already have speakers up here on stage and worship team leaders up here that will be uh, taking off their mask up here because they're evenly spaced out. But sorry, next week, for you guys in the audience, uh, you guys can unmask if you so choose to. All right? Uh, next announcement, this is the one I was going for, the baptismal classes. Uh, if any of you guys want to be baptized, you guys want to follow the Lord's command in believers' baptism, um, we have a couple of classes coming up the next Sunday and the following Sunday after that during first hour in our library in the other building. And so if you want to get baptized, uh, Dr. Ray Chan, he'll be doing a baptismal class over there. Now, if you go to the class, it doesn't mean like you're automatically set you're going to get baptized. We just want to teach you guys uh, and remind you guys of what baptism is all about, the importance of it, the, 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 the background, the reason why we should do it. And we just want to make sure that we're all on the same page before at the end of the month where we're going to have a live baptismal service back behind me, behind this curtain here um, in our baptismal pool. And so, uh, oh, curtain, oh, it's open. Anyways, you know it's back there. We'll set it up. Um, yeah, so if anyone that you uh, know of, you yourself want to be baptized Please attend the baptismal class during first hour of the next two Sundays. All right? With that, uh, we're going to go on to that next slide, which I believe should be uh, a reminder about communion. Uh, today, if you guys didn't pick up a little cup cracker thing outside those doors, uh, we are going to be having communion here. So for our watchers at home as well, if you guys uh, at home want to prepare a little thing of like juice and cracker or something like that, then uh, please go ahead and do that now uh, so that you guys are ready to go by when we take our communion towards the end of our service. Okay, with that, I'm going to ask you guys um, to stand. Uh, I'm going to uh, pray for us as we take care of our offering. Um, and for those of you guys that are online, we do it through push pay. We do it all virtually. Um, but why don't you guys stand and, and pray with me as we get ready to worship our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father God, I thank you so much for bringing each individual, each family here today. God, there's no mistake that we are here this morning and it is to be reminded of who you are. It's for us to sing of your praises because you, our Father, chose us. You chose us to be your children, God. And for that, we want to thank you. We want to praise you. We want to sing back to you. We want to give to you out of our pockets. Not because we are awesome and cool in and of ourselves, Lord. Not that we are completely lovable in ourselves or even lovable at all, really. But God, that you chose us even while we were still sinners. You chose us while we were not perfect. You chose to show grace to us. You, you chose to give us hope. You chose to love us. You chose to provide eternally for us because of who you are as God, as Father. And so as we sing to you, as we sing about you and what you have done for us, Lord, I pray that you will bless this time. You'll bless our offerings. You'll bless our voices. You'll bless uh, Pastor Johnny as he speaks later on, Lord. Thank you so much for today. Thank you for bringing every one of us here in person or around our devices at home. And I pray that you'll just allow us to truly worship you this morning. In Jesus, I pray. Amen. 
I want to welcome everyone again to our connection service and remain standing for our time of singing if you can, but please do feel free to sit um, whenever you need to. And uh, let's just sing praises to our God together.
restart that. <laughs> Thank you. I did the same thing last month. Thank you for your grace. Till the race is finished 
people, uh, yeah, five people in each team, right? And so if it's just the, the lay people, so we're going to, to pay basketball. And the way, how do we pick the, uh, the pairs? The way we did it when I was young, I hope you don't do it now, okay, is a very insensitive and inhumane way. <laughs> Let's say, okay, we have 10 people here. So first, we pick two captains. Okay, so Pastor Steve, this is, uh, this is Team S, Superman, okay? And this is Pastor Alex, okay? So this is the A team, okay? So Pastor Steve said, okay, I'm going to pick Pastor Toby because he is tall and big, right? And then Pastor Alex said, well, I pick Pastor Chris because he is even bigger and stronger, right? And so then Pastor Steve said, okay, I pick Keith because he is young and mean, <laughs> all right? And then Pastor Alex said, oh, I will pick someone younger and meaner, okay? So that's the way we pick. We try to pick the best. And then I was the one to be picked also. I know that I will be the last one to be picked <laughs> because I'm old, I'm slow, I'm fragile, I'm skinny, right? Now, just think about it. If you are the last couple people to be picked, how would you think? You feel miserable, right? You feel miserable because, well, no one want me, okay? Uh, but this is the way we pick people, right? If it's up to us, uh, this is the way we pick people. We want to pick the best. We want to pick the most talent the strongest and uh, the best player uh, in our team. But God doesn't use our standard. He switched 180 degrees. God used three standards, I say three qualifying standards, to determine who would be picked. It's uh, recorded in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 27 to 29. Look at the yellow, okay, the yellow work. God chose the foolish one, the powerless one, the despised by the world, that means that person's not popular. So God doesn't, I mean, it's not choosing us like our regular standard. See, uh, the, for, the, for the best university, they pick someone with a uh, GPA of 4.0. My time is 4.0, okay? Now it's whatever, 4.5, 4.6, okay? And then the SAT score of uh, 1,600 and then the, uh, the, the car's representative. Uh, then, okay, th these are the people that they're going to pick, but that's not how Jesus picked. Jesus picked Peter, John, Andrew. They were fishermen, right? They were fishermen. They are not popular. They, I don't think they are rich. Uh, and and then, uh, then if we read the uh, Old Testament, remember the prophet Elijah? Prophet Elijah, God told him, okay, there will be a famine on the earth for more than three years. So you go up to the upper reach of the river, and then I will ask Crow, C-R-O-W, okay, to bring you breakfast and lunch. No, breakfast and dinner, no free lunch. <laughs> Bible have no free lunch, right? <laughs> yes, we got manna, and then we got <laughs> with dinner, no free lunch. Now think about it, crow is really lower class. No one weighs a crow to be your pet, right? And they kind of, they eat rubbish. And why did God choose a crow? Because like what he said here is the, the uh, things that despise by, by others. God can choose peacock, right? peacock to bring the breakfast to Elijah, and then the peacock opened up, wow, okay. And then in, at night, oh, the bald eagle, powerful, big one, okay, bring the dinner. No, God to the crows. And then after a while, God told Elijah, okay, you now you go down to this, uh, this town, and I'm going to ask a widow to take care of you. A widow also a very poor widow. If you 
read the Bible there, they say, she have only a tiny bit of flour and oil at home. And then she told Elijah that after I cook that one meal, I'm going to eat it with my son. That will be our last supper. And then we're going to die. Why God choose someone so poor and miserable? Why not pick Bill Gates or Warren Buffett okay, or someone rich? Now, because God told us that three qualifications, foolish, powerless, not popular, so no one can boast in the presence of God. So we cannot say, okay, the church have done so well because the pastor is uh, uh, someone with IQ, I don't know what's a high IQ, okay? 130, okay? 140, okay? And this guy is so popular, it's like the K-pop star, okay? So everyone will come to listen to him. No, God picked someone who is foolish, powerless, and not popular. So when I stand here, I know I'm foolish. I know I'm powerless. I know I'm not popular. So, but that's how God, how God chooses people, how God chooses us. So if God call us, if God pick us, do we have any choice? Do you have any choice? Yes, we have at least two choices. The first choice is either we say yes or no, and then we pick the time also. Uh, some people might say, okay, I, I know it seems like God called me, but let me wait. Let me wait. Let me finish my college first. Then let me get, my, get a good job. And then after a good job, okay, let me save enough money. After saving enough money, let me get married and have children. After we got children, say, oh, let me retire. And then I will serve you, God, 100%. Okay, but that is not the way that God wants us to serve him. Look at here. Okay, we choose the time. And remember, uh, look at the first uh, passage. Remember also your creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come and the years draw near, of which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Here, God told us we should remember our Creator in the days of our youth. So someone will say, I am not young anymore. I am 40, I'm 50, or like me, I'm, I'm 68. Okay, oh, okay. But look at here, here. The youth doesn't mean the age. He said, you is before the evil days come. What are the evil days? If you read the rest of the chapter, he said, when, you're, when you cannot see well, when you cannot, you cannot hear well, you cannot fall to sleep early, uh, easily, and you have this, uh, this pain and this ailment and all that. So unless we feel that we are at that stage, we are here, we are the youth, and that we should choose to serve God. Actually, the earlier, the better. The earlier, the better. Uh, I thank God that I have an opportunity. I, I got saved in this church. And then uh, at age 25, I start to uh, be the so-called the head sponsor of the Cantonese kind of cups, you know, fellowship. First the junior high, and then the senior high, and then the college for 20 years. I was working outside at that time. And uh, so when I was young, okay, I, we, we took a uh, 15 passenger vans and picked up people, uh, picked up the, 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 the young people. And I have the record, we have the record of uh, going to Yosemite or Tahoe in a one day trip. One day trip, why one day trip? Because we, we were so poor, we have no money. So one day trip, so I picked up the first, child, the, first, the first kid around 5 a.m., okay? And then pick up the other kids and all that. And then we will arrive, we will arrive Yosemite or Tahoe by around 10. Then I did the preaching. After the preaching, I did the barbecue. After the barbecue, so they, they have a fun time, and then around 5, then I drove back. So we, when we reach church, it's about 10 or 10.30. Every, everybody clean up the van inside and out. So then I then took the, 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 the kids home, so by the time I get back home, it's about 12.30 or 1. Okay. Were I tired? Yes, super tired. Okay, but the next day, I woke up, it's okay. 
I go back to work or I teach Sunday school? Can I still do it today? I not even want to try. <laughs> no way, okay? I might lie down on the bed for two, three days, okay? <laughs> it's just too much, all right? So, at whatever stage we serve, when you're younger, you can serve in one area. When you are older, you serve in other area. And, and then the, uh, the, uh, the Psalm 90, 10, actually this passage is used frequently for funeral service. Okay, so the years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80, yet their span is but toils and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. And we fly away. What it means is our life is so fragile. So fragile. We do not know what happened tomorrow. We don't know what happened. We, if we are lucky, we live until 70 or 80. Yeah, you know, I know some people who live uh, 90. I, I know a few people who live 90 plus, but in all cases that I know, they become very weak and have this pain and this ailment. So when sometimes people say, hey, Chang Man, Bak Soya, come on, come to me, say, wish you are 100 years old. I say, no, no way. I don't want the pain, I don't want to ail men, and then I don't want to go to that many funerals <laughs> because all my friends are one son, me will die. Huh? And we, we cannot predict what will happen to us. During this pandemic, I have done one funeral that have, I stand between two caskets, one casket on the right, one casket on the left, husband and wife. They die both of the COVID within a few days. And the funeral service uh, was only attended by a few people because at that time it's a restriction. Okay. So though they, they, are, they were kind of senior old people, around 90 or something. So you say, okay, they are, because they were old. But then I have a lease, under 30 years old, and she died of COVID. So life is fragile and life is unpredictable. So we choose the time. The time is now. The time is ASAP. So we have our choice, yes or no, and then choose the time, and then we can choose uh, what kind of foot that we're going to bear. What kind of foot that we're going to bear? Take a look at these two passages. You did not choose me, but then in the yellow words, your foot should abide. That means the foot that we bear should last. It should not be gone. And then another passage from the Revelation chapter 14 say, uh, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, why this best are the dead who die in the law from now on? Best indeed, say the spirit, that they might rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. Now, John chapter 15 talked about food which will last. Food which will last. When we die, we have to leave everything behind. I feel like a little bit like uh, uh, look, uh, looking at the, uh, reading the book of Acts, that a little bit like Peter. Peter told someone, I have no gold, I have no silver, I have no money. I feel the same, but I do have something valuable, and you have something valuable. Okay, I have something valuable. I am a classical music nut, and I count how many CD I have recently. Seven hundred and fifty around, and those are good quality one, not the cheap, the cheapo. Okay, <laughs> let's just say it's twelve dollar a piece. It's nine thousand dollars. Don't tell my wife, alright. And then with the good CD, I need what? Good steel equipment, right? So I have a five figures steel equipment. Those are the things that I wear you. But when I die, do anyone want my CD? <laughs> Most likely not. Steel equipment? No, it's, the speaker is four feet tall. You want one? And I told my wife, say, when I die, why don't you just fold all my CD into my casket? All right? <laughs> and, and then the speaker and the steel equipment into the cemetery pot, we just put it there. 
And my, my wife looked at me and said, how do you know you die first? <laughs> <laughs> and I told her, yeah, I'm going to die first because you have your parents or your parents live around 90, 90 years old, so you have the good gene. And then women usually last men for seven years. Okay, so I'm going to die first. So we argue who's going to die first. <laughs> but the point is, whatever we wear, we cannot bring it along, right? And, but then here, it says something here. Okay? Something your foot should abide. And then the Revelation chapter 14 is, we use that for final message also. Here, there's three blessings there on the Revelation chapter 14. Now, say, the first blessing is to die in the Lord. Death is not a blessing to most people. No one said, oh, this is my birthday wish, I want to die. Okay? No one wants to say that. Okay? But then here is a blessing. Die in the Lord. That means we will have eternal life. Okay, so the first blessing. The second blessing, we rest from our labors. No more work, uh, no more pain, no more suffering, and no more sickness. So that's the second blessing. I want to focus on the third one. For their deeds follow them. We cannot bring things with us, but then our deeds can follow them. What, 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 what are we talking about here? We have a memorial service for uh, Pastor Danny Ma uh, here a couple weeks ago. Pastor Daniel Ma is, uh, we have a nickname, okay, in the Chinese circle. It's called, we call him a walking Bible. He knows the Bible, page one to page, <laughs> to the last page. And he has written 120 plus books. 120 by himself, okay, by himself. All the commentary and uh, books about, uh, all, all about the Bible. Now, so he's gone, okay, he died in the Lord, he was but then his deeds follow them. His deeds follow His books will be, it's, uh, people still buy his books because it's good for our, for our study. So we should choose to do things which will last, choose things which will follow us. And so some, sometimes people say, okay, I have trouble with my, with my kids. How can I teach my kids to respect me, to, uh, to honor me? Easy. If we honor our parents, they will honor us because they, they learn from example, right? They learn from example, you, and, and, and so, so, so the, the deeds follow them. See, if we do that, okay, our kids will pick that up. And how can we influence other people? Uh, if we work hard at church and then people around us see us, say, oh, I can do that too. I can do that too. Pastor Johnny said he could, he could drive to uh, Yosemite on a one-day trip. I can, I can do it in half day or something. Right? <laughs> and so those are the deeds that follow us. So we can choose the time and we can choose the kind of foods. Uh, so God doing the choosing and we do have our own choice. We have our own choice too. Huh? Uh, we, we should pick something that also cannot be... Uh, uh, taken away. Now, so uh, another passage I want to uh, share with you is not only something that lasts, but something that not going to be taken away. Remember Martha? Remember Mary? Okay, Martha is doing, was doing a big meal. Okay, if I read the, uh, the passage correctly, Jesus and his disciples, I assume, okay, all 12, uh, have going to have, I guess, a dinner, okay, at Martha and Mary's house. Now, so Jesus plus 12 disciples is 13 people, right? Plus Martha, okay, plus Mary, plus Lazarus, so at least 16. Cooking a meal for 16 people, is it easy? Raise your hand if you think it's easy, we're going to go to your house. Wow, so Martha was very busy, right? Like we all remember that. He was very busy, and then he started to complain. And said, look at my sister, Mary, okay? She's not doing anything. So she kind of complained to Jesus. And then Jesus told him, Martha, Martha, 
you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. And Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Now, one thing is necessary. I am not a Bible scholar, so I don't know what that one thing is. Bible scholars argue what that one thing is, but I have a, a simple answer for that. But then he said that one thing is, is a quick thing because it will not be taken away. That means, okay, we should choose something that cannot be taken away. And what is that? And what is that? We know that Mary was sitting by the feet of Jesus and listened to him. Okay, so Mary got the knowledge from, from Jesus. And that knowledge sank deep in her heart and her mind cannot be taken away. But it's there. It's there. I, sometimes I like to uh, uh, we, we, uh, memorize some of the Bible words. When I m memorize the Bible words, no one can take it away from me. It's me in there. When you read the Bible, when you study the Bible, the knowledge is in you. No one can take it away. When you serve, when you serve, whether it's page team or small group or Sunday school or uh, the, the sound booth or PowerPoint, no one can take it away. It's there. You've you done it already. So, so I would say that one thing is thing that's uh, spiritual. One thing is more than one thing. It's all things that are spiritual. We should have priority. I don't think, okay, uh, Jesus kind of, I mean, uh, campaigned about laughter. But laughter, I mean, we, we, we need, <laughs> we Chinese, we, we like to have refreshment and all that too. Uh, you think refreshment not important? No? Okay, it's just because it's, we should have a priority. When Jesus ta start, to, start to teach, and then Martha should drop everything and listen to Jesus first. Well, who's going to prepare the meal? Order pizza from one table. Right? Or KFC chicken. Or a cup of noodles for everyone. That's it, right? 16 cup of noodles. And so those are, we, should, we should concentrate on things that last and things that cannot be taken away. And then it's talking about picking the foods, the bare foods, what kind of food. So at least I see there are three kinds. First is the food of the spirit. Food of the spirit. And lie, okay, nine, nine kind of foods. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Uh, I originally I want to elaborate a little bit, but then I look at the agenda and find out that instead of 50 minutes on the Cantonese side, I have only 40 here. So I just kind of skip here. But then God told us that if we are willing, we can bear food. This love, joy, peace, patience, that is that when, when, we, when we got saved, uh, God say, he, uh, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We can become a new creature. But we can choose to become, to con continue to be an old creature also. The only difference is, before is an old, was an old creature that don't have eternal life. And now it's an old creature that have eternal life. But then, all this blessing, love, joy, peace, patience might not be with us if we do not seek it, if we do not try to achieve it. So that's the first kind of food. The food of blessing is a uh, food of the spirit is more eternal, right? And then the second kind is the food of witnessing. Very familiar message from Acts chapter 1. But you will receive power and the Holy Spirit come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the end of the world. I know some people will ask, uh, there are so many people out there. There are so many people out there. So uh, uh, non-believing people out there. Whom should I share the gospel with? Uh, and that, where, where is my Jerusalem? Where is my Jerusalem? And where is Samaria? Well, it's, yes, there are so many people out there. There are so many unbelieving people. Uh, and, and, and believe people out there. So, but the people that we can share the gospel is the people around us. If you still go to school, it's your schoolmates. If you go to work, it's your co-worker. When you reach home, if you have unsafe uh, relatives, 
or family member, they are, they are your targets. And then, when you go to a barber shop, have this same, same hairdresser, that is someone we should share the gospel with. Or you go to a restaurant, you go to a restaurant, and then you are familiar with the, the you, 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 you build some relationship with the, uh, the waiter and waitress. Those are the people. Those are the people there. And so where is the Jerusalem? Jerusalem is in a school, in your work, at your home, and uh, the, the, just people surround us. And where is my Samaria? Where is my Samaria? I don't think sometimes we have to worry too, too much. If we are faithful in Jerusalem, you have enough people that you can share the gospel with. But occasionally, you might have Samaria. <laughs> Samaria. I share with you one, let me share with you one story. Uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, one couple, uh, middle-aged couple, they asked me, can you come to my home and share the gospel with uh, my three parents? Okay, so the, the husband have a mom, and then the wife have uh, the father and mother. They are all 70 years old past, okay? He said, well, they show interest in, uh, in the Bible, and they sometimes attend our virtual Bible study also. But when we try to ask them to come to accept Christ, they all said no. said, no, no, no. We don't know why, so I said, well, maybe I can visit, and maybe I can visit them. So I said, would you just text me your address? So they text me their address. It's in Brentwood. Not Alameda, not San Diego, not Goldland. If you have been to Brentwood, we go foot picking there. Okay? It's one and a half hour away. Okay? So I said, oh. So I, when I was driving there, I thought, wow, it's kind of far away. Uh, would I just wasting my time there, right? And, but then I, the, a thought come to my mind. That's, that's my Samaria. And Jesus talked about walk an extra mile, right? I just drive a few extra miles. Okay, so when I reach them, well, with there, okay, the so three seniors were there. So I, I asked them, in a sense, okay, why? Why don't you want to accept Christ? They said, wow, we are ancestor worshipers. If we become Christian, that means we cannot visit cemetery. We cannot put picture of our ancestor at home. And we will be punished when we do not pray before lunch and dinner. <laughs> so they have all kind of this misconception. OK, so I, I share the gospel with them uh, over an hour, and then I say, would you like to join me in a, in a prayer to accept Christ? And I really, I mean, this is a, it's, not, it's not me, it's a blessing from God that all three of them said, yes. So I say one sentence, they, I said one sentence, they repeat one sentence, three of them uh, repeat after me in unison, in one voice. And then later, okay, the, 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 the couples, uh, the, the son and daughter took a picture of us. And it's, a, it's a, a great blessing. So now I have two pictures I really treasure. One picture is I took about maybe 15 years ago, and we I baptized five seniors at the same time, all 75 years and up. I look at the picture again. They all died already. They passed away, but they are they're in heaven. And then this time I got the picture with the three seniors with me. So it was a blessing because I remember how, how such a beautiful song when you hear three, when you, when you hear three people saying the sinner prayer together. Now, so this is the fruit of witnessing. And you don't have to be a pastor to do that. And most likely you will be more effective with people around you because you have some relationship. You have some relationship with the, your schoolmates, some relationship with your coworker, with your friends, with your, uh, your family members. So this is the foot of witnessing is kind of uh, external. And then the third type, the last type that I want to share with you, is the foot of good works. Matthew 25, I believe Pastor Steve already uh, uh, shared this uh, passage with you. They're talking about, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was liquid, and you called me. I was sick, and you visited me. 
and I was in prison and you came to me. Uh, so you look at this one here and say, well, I don't, I don't know anyone who is hungry or thirsty or cold. Do you? Yes, you do. We just drive around in Oakland. I drive around in San Francisco. I drive around in the Bay Area. You see hundreds and thousands of people, homeless people, living the, under the overpass, or the people standing in the corner, begging for money. I know some people have some idea about uh, these people. Sometimes some people say they are lazy, but we know that besides laziness, there are people who have mental problems. There are people who have drug problems. Right? And so we have all, all kind of people around us. And uh, when uh, Pastor Steve and I uh, uh, and the, the other pastor talk about uh, this well wishing po uh, chosen project, I mentioned something about that, oh, I was very poor when I was in Hong Kong. And then a couple of days later, Pastor Steve sent me an email. Why don't you share about the poverty in Hong Kong? He's my boss, so I have no choice. <laughs> <clears throat> See, before communism took over uh, China in 1949, my parents, uh, 9,000 and thousands of refugees, uh, left their home in China and flee to Hong Kong. It's just like the uh, people in UK now, okay, they, they flee to uh, uh, Poland. And so my parents were among them, and Hong Kong at that time was a, was a poor city in the 1950s, 1960, and even 1970. Since there were so many refugees, the Hong Kong government was not equipped to deal with them. So my parents and my other refugees, they found some land by the, by the hillside, okay? And they, they, the government let you do that. You, and then they, they use some cheap wood and sheet metal and build a I, I could not say it's a house, okay? It's a, let's just say it's a house, a 400, I, I say it's about 400 square feet, okay, for six of us, okay? And uh, there was no running water, no toilet, public or private. Don't ask me how we do number one and number two, okay? Because it's so disgusting, so I'm not going to tell you, okay? And of course, uh, no heat, Okay. No hot water for sure, and no cooking stove. Okay, and we use those uh, uh, like like uh, when you barbecue, you use those uh, uh, liquid uh, liquid whatever. Okay, to 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 uh, what was it? And lighter food. Lighter food. Yeah, it's kind of lighter food, right? And no water, no water, and so. Where we get the water, no running water. So there's a house, a family that have a well there. Okay, so if 10 cents a bucket, okay, so you have to pay them 10 cents and get a bucket of water. Okay, it's about five gallons, okay. And we were so poor, 10, 10 cents is a lot of money. Uh, was a lot of money at that time. My father worked two jobs. He stopped. He started work, he, start, uh, he left home around 5 a.m. and then came home around 10. And uh, we have to work at home. My mom have to work at home and we all have to, to work together, okay, in order to, to earn some money. And my sister who was maybe six or seven years older than me, he, she had to quit school after graduating from the elementary school. And my, my sister was, was a great student. He's, she's always number one in the class. So my mom told us, the teacher come over and said, would you let your, your daughter to stay in the school? Just stay in the school, we're not going to charge you anything. Then my parents said, no, sorry, okay, because she have to work. She have to work to support the family. And so she worked, okay, after graduating from elementary school, full time, okay. I, I was lucky, Stephen and Edward, they were lucky too, we could go to uh, high school. Uh, but we, I did not have to pay anything for the high school. Not because I'm a good student, but because I'm poor. I was poor. 
You have no money? Okay, so, okay, free. And uh, if you've been to Hong Kong in the summer, it's very hot, right? Very, very hot. And uh, the school have no drinking fountain, no drinking fountain at all, okay? Because if you, if you, if you drink those water, I mean, it's untreated, and you can get sick, so no water, okay? But then every school almost have a, a little store that sells stationeries and soda, okay? So soda was 20 cents each, and for Coca-Cola, it's 30 cents. But I have no pocket money, none. From first grade up to 18 years old, when I, when I after I, uh, then, 18 years old, we immigrate to the United States. I have no pocket money, none, none. And one time, I was so thirsty. I think, I think it, it might be after a PE. I was so thirsty. And, but I have no money. Okay, so I saw a teacher, a teacher standing not too far away from me, and that teacher used to treat me quite well. So I walked over and said, "Sir, can you buy me a drink?" He looked at me, didn't say much, and then said, "No," and then he walked away. He might have his reason. I'm, I'm don't bring him because he 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 might thought that okay, he he may not know that I'm I'm so poor. I have no money in my pocket. Okay, but I was around 13 or 14 years old at that time. But it gave me some really, after that I got some really bad habit. The, ha the bad habit was, I'm not asking anyone for help. I'm not begging anyone. Even I am poor, I have dignity. Okay, I'm not going to ask people for help. And uh, well, God is kind of make a joke for me, and then I got saved, and I become a pastor. You know, one of the things that pastors have to do is to beg people for help. Hey, can you teach Sunday school? Oh, no, 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 I know you can teach Sunday school. Yeah, yeah, uh, can, you, can you do a, 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 a head a small group? Oh, no, 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 you can do that. How about uh, the... the, the uh, uh, station the, the sound booth. I don't know anything about sound booth. Yeah, but you, I think you can do it. Uh, so God changed me that I start to ask people for help. But deep down, I mean, it, I, mean I, I, I still have that kind of bad habit. I don't want to ask for help. Uh, so fruits of the good works is we might, we, even one of the things that you might, not, you might not know if you, are, you have not been uh, extremely poor uh, before, that most of the poor people, they would not go around and ask for help because they have the dignity also, unless they are absolutely necessary. So we look at the, uh, the people in uh, Ethiopia, we might not know them, but I'm sure, I'm sure they're not rich. I'm sure they don't have much at all. And their water, most likely is very dirty, and they got sick and all that. So this is something that we can get involved. So not just, well, of course, we try to reach out to people and get them safe, but at the same time, God asks us we should care for the poor and the needy. Talk, look at the people who are hungry, who are thirsty, and who, who are cold, and we should do something. So I conclude this message with, uh, uh, from, uh, with Proverbs chapter, chapter uh, 19, 17. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Wouldn't it such a big honor and big privilege that we be able to lend it to the Lord. But that is God want, want, want us to do. So I hope okay, that uh, we will strive to bear fruit, the spiritual fruit, the uh, fruit of witnessing, and the fruit of good works. That's uh, uh, closing the service in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for 
you to introduce the uh, chosen project for us. And we know that for $39, it's a tiny amount for all of us. But then it means a lot for the people who are in need. And so we pray, Father, that as we uh, study the uh, passages today, that uh, God, you first, you, you save us. And then uh, in most cases, Father, you also choose us to do things. We pray, Father, that we will be obedient to your calling, that we won't procrastinate, that we are willing to serve you in our capacity. So that's our time as we uh, meditate on your words. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Johnny. <clears throat> Isn't it great that God does the choosing, that he chooses the poor to minister to the world, that he chooses the foolish, a guy who flunked ninth grade, <laughs> had a 1.68 GPA in high school to be used in ministry together. And it's really cool for me to see Pastor Johnny, myself, we've known, well, he's known me all my life, uh, to be able to serve together as pastors here at this church. Last Sunday was dubbed Chosen Sunday. And for the past couple of weeks, we've been teaming up with World Vision in preparation for this, new for this new child sponsorship program. Instead of families choosing a kid, we put the power in, this, in the children's hands and we had them choose their sponsors. Well, how did they do that? Last week, we had photo booths set up in the gym, as many of you guys know. And any family that wanted to sponsor a child went to the photo booth, had their picture taken, and then they, through that, they could have a child choose them. They did that because after we took our pictures at those photo booths last week, those pictures were sent, were emailed over to Ethiopia to, a, a, to a, a city called Abaya. And this past Wednesday, this past Wednesday, World Vision in Abaya, in Ethiopia, they gathered up all their children, they strung up all of our pictures in their village, and one by one, each kid came up to choose their sponsor. And I have a video to show you guys what happened this past Wednesday in Abaya. Let's show that video. Today is Reveal Sunday, where we are going to reveal to you guys who joined in this program uh, who chose us. As you guys probably saw here in the lobby uh, when you walked in this morning, there's a bunch of envelopes that are up against the walls. And all those en envelopes, 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 however you pronounce it, there's a, profile, there's a picture and a profile of a kid in those envelopes. And those are the, that's the child that chose you to be their sponsor. Now, before we get there, you might be sitting here thinking, oh, dude, I missed last week. This program sounds so cool. I still want to be a part of this, 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 this chosen program. I still want to be a part of it. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not too late. You still can join in, in this wonderful chosen program. For those of you who want to sponsor a child, um, let me get this PowerPoint up. Or if you want to sponsor an additional child, all you have to do right now, and I encourage you to do it if you haven't yet, text BACBC to this number here, 56170. After you text this number to them, uh, World Vision is going to send you a text message back with a link in it. 
Just click that link, answer all those questions. Um, you could input. There you go. Uh, they'll send you a link. Uh, you just answer all the questions, tell them how many kids you want to uh, sponsor, and then uh, just input your payment after that. And after that, you can just go out. There's a photo booth right now outside of MC2 set up over there. You can have your picture or your family's picture taken so that you can still join in this uh, program. You can sponsor one child. You can sponsor more than one child. That's up to you. Um, but we want everybody, as many people as possible, to join in this program. If you're watching at home right now and you want to be a part of this program and you can't be here at our photo booth, that's cool. If you text uh, BACBC to that number, you could just take a selfie or take a picture at home and you could email it to, uh, you could text it to them as well and load it up in your application. For those of us have, that have been, uh, that have signed up for this sponsorship program, uh, like Pastor Johnny did, like Pastor Steve did, like I did, like Pastor Alex did, um, we get the privilege of starting this relationship with this child. We get to write letters to them. We get to give them additional gifts if we so choose to. But the $39 a month that we're sending to them, it doesn't go to that specific child. It's going to be sent to the community as a whole to provide clean water, to provide education, to provide discipleship programs within, with the local pastors that are there. All right? And so we just want to encourage you guys to do that. For many of us here this Sunday, I think there were over 90 families or individuals in this church that signed up for this chosen program. And I'm so excited to hear of, of, of that number. I'm so glad that we want to just open up our hearts and provide for other people in Jerusalem and Samaria and beyond to the ends of the world, as Pastor Johnny said. And so after service today, for those of us that are part of this program, I want to invite you guys to join me going over to the wall, finding your envelope with your name on it and seeing which child chose you. Now, before uh, we close up our service, there's still something really important that I need to restate and I want us to still remember. That we don't do these child sponsorship things. We don't do good works. We don't take care of the homeless. We don't take care of the poor to earn God's love. We do these things because we already have God's love as his children. And so I want to transition us over to our communion right now and welcome Pastor Alex up here as we are reminded of God's love and how he provided and how he chose us with his life. Pastor Alex. In, in the bread and the cup together. And so I know we have uh, slides. I think our AV team has slides for this time where we get to uh, gather ourselves together. And before we celebrate, I just want to remind us that, well, this is a time of communion. It's, it's another word for the Lord's Supper. And it just means that if you've been missing out on the Lord, this meal gets us to this place where we commune with the Lord. If you've missed out on communing together at the Lord's table, this is a time where we get to commune. And so these uh, words that we say together, these prayers, uh, call and response, are our means by which, Lord willing, we are encouraged by the presence of God in this place, in our midst, and in our hearts. As He abides in us, we abide with Him, and we abide with one another. Some of us may need to be carried to the table this morning. You know what I mean? You missed out. You've, you've felt lost or lonely. Maybe you've been missing in some way. And what this meal reminds every believer is that the Lord is with us. And so when it gets to that, uh, the text there on the screen, uh, where, it's, where it says all in yellow, I hope that we can say to the Lord these prayers. So the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give thanks and praise. 
I want to give us a, a moment of, of silence and a silent prayer. And if you don't know the Lord, um, there's going to be a slide here um, that you could pray as we prepare our hearts to, to eat together. Let's just pause for a moment in reflection, confession, repentance. Father God, thank you for this wonderful Sunday. The reminder that you are the one who chose us to be your people. So together as we partake of this meal, before we rush into the hallway and grab that envelope to figure out who chose us, Lord, in this moment we commune with you. We give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word who created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took on flesh, Jesus, as your son, born in the likeness of man. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross And he put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you, Father, a holy people, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, that we might proclaim the excellencies of you, Lord, who called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. And so in this meal, we commune with you as your people. Help us to recognize your presence this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us boldly proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, the gifts of God for the people of God. In the Holy Scriptures there, um, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. You get Get your bread ready. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So if you got your bread, let us partake together with a heart of thankfulness. you got your cup, I think you just turn it upside down. In the same way, also, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake together with thankfulness. Hmm. Amen. Worship team is going to get ready for this uh, wonderful song of praise that would send us out into the hallway, to that wall where we got the envelopes. Let's stand together and prepare our hearts to respond to the Lord in song.
from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. See you guys next week. And remember to pick up your little photo if you guys have it. See you guys next week. <laughs>